if you're someone who is in the market looking for a gaming laptop or let's just say you want a high performing machine for 3d modeling or video editing and you don't want to cash in a lot of money then chances are that you would have come across the budget gaming laptops from msi and this here is my one year ownership review of the msi gf 63 thin 9rc now i know that's quite a long name so this laptop was released back in 2019 for a price of about 55000 indian rupees the mrp quoted was around 70000 but i bought this laptop from flipkart for 53990 in august 2019 and i even saw the prices go as low as 47000 during the diwali sales starting things off with the performance of this laptop it rocks a core i5 9th generation processor from intel coupled with 8 gb of ddr4 ram which is expandable and it performs just like how we would expect from a budget gaming laptop and there is nothing to extraordinary going on in here at least in terms of performance it handles day to day tasks like web browsing and a couple of low graphics games quite smoothly and it even scored surprisingly well in single core testing and the scores were above average in multi core just behind the likes of the older generation core i7 processors from intel but where it really struggles is with that nvidia gtx 1050 graphics card with 4gb of ddr5 graphics memory now this is a budget chip from nvidia and it does not perform up to the mark but for the price it is being sold at the chip offers us decent levels of performance but with a gtx 1050 ti on this laptop things would have been definitely better in the gaming section i played some of the games like f1 2018 csgo gta 5 and pubg now for the first three games the experience was good it handled the games pretty well there were a couple of uh, random frame drops here and there but the rest of the game play was pretty smooth but when it came to handling gta 5 it just couldn't handle it to a point where it lacked so much that it was simply unplayable the heat management was also subpar considering it is a gaming laptop from msi a company which is known to have good thermal systems in their laptops and for the thermal it has got two fans one is for the cpu and the other one is for the gpu and mind you the fans make quite a lot of noise Now for the variant that I own it comes with 1 TB of HDD memory and there is no SSD on this laptop although there is an optional M2 slot for me to pop in an SSD but since it does not come with an SSD right out of the box understandably so the laptop takes its own sweet time to boot and to open up apps now talking about opening apps it literally takes like forever to open its what is called as the dragon center which is basically an app from msi to control your fan speed and your display settings and it even lets you get into gaming mode which again is just a fancy way of saying that it increases your fan speed the dragon center just doesn't start now this happens to me when i try to open up the app after the computer has been rebooted and once it has been opened it functions and opens normally again but the first start of the app is really very annoying moving on to the display it is a 15.6 inches full hd ips panel with a 60 hertz refresh rate and the color reproduction is good and it is accurate and it even gets adequately bright as well it has got fairly thin bezels around the sides of the display i guess that's where the name thin in the gf63 thin 9rc comes from The display quality is good. It certainly could have been better, but for the price, I'm not complaining. I just wish it was a little brighter. Now, coming to the build of this laptop, um, I have mixed feelings about it. This laptop is made from plastic with a little use of metal around the keyboard and the trackpad, and there is also a thin sheet of metal used at the top of this laptop. They don't contribute anyhow in maintaining the structural rigidity 
the thin metallic sheets are used just to give the buyer a better feel. The chassis is made from plastic just like any other gaming laptop in this range and it even feels sturdy. But things start getting ugly when we move to the display housing. The housing of the display is made from cheap quality plastic and it feels very delicate. It is flimsy, so much so that it starts wobbling even if I turn on the ceiling fan at maximum speed. This laptop can survive a drop or two once it so happened that one of my friends dropped it from a good 4 feet height and luckily I got away with just a little scuff mark on the side but it cannot survive the load of even a book kept on top of it. I had this habit of keeping my books on top of the laptop and now there are these marks on the display while displaying black or darker shades of color and it never really recovered from it. The keyboard is nice, the keys don't offer much key travel and they are a bit mushy but they can surely be used for typing purposes but for playing games you may need to consider buying another keyboard. There is backlighting on offer which is red by default and there are three levels of brightness for the backlighting and you can even turn it off but sadly you cannot change the color so the RGB keyboard is missing here and there is backlight bleeding which can be easily seen. The trackpad is of decent size, offers good precision and has support for multi-finger gestures but it is of poor quality and that is evident as soon as you click the trackpad. There is a little play in it and I checked with other MSI laptops in this range and all of those had the same issue so it is not a manufacturing defect with just my unit. For the audio it has got two down facing speakers which are neither too good nor too bad. They sound quite alright, they don't crackle at high volumes but the highs are not very high and it doesn't get too loud. And if you're planning to get this laptop and binge on Netflix or consume any kind of media using the stock speakers, then I suggest you get a pair of headphones or a set of external speakers. Coming to one major aspect of this laptop, the battery life. The battery life is very poor. It is a 3 cell battery which lasts not more than 4 hours of medium usage and it gets worse at maximum of 2 hours of backup when I started playing games on it. The Shikoni charging adapter included in the box takes about 2 hours to charge the laptop from 0 to 100%. The port selection on this laptop is well thought out. To the right, it has got two 3.5mm audio jacks, one for mic and the other one for the audio output. There are two USB-A ports on the right and one on the left. So at three in total, there are enough USB-A ports. There is a DC input to the left and it even gets a small indicator to when the charger is connected. There is a USB Type-C, an Ethernet port and a Kensington slot to the right, followed by an HDMI port at the back. It also gets a 720p webcam for video calls, but the quality is below average. The inclusion of one is still very helpful for making video calls. All in all, it is one of the best laptops that you can buy in this price range of under 50,000. There are other options available like the Asus's ROG series, which gets an 8th generation processor and it is also more expensive than this one. By adding a little over 7,000 rupees, you can get other variants of this same laptop with an option of getting a GTX 1050 Ti, a GTX 1650, and there are also other options available with SSD. But for 50,000 rupees, this is the best that you can buy. And I would choose this over any notebook that is available in this price range. With this, you get more performance than any of the notebooks in this price. And it is a better value for money and overall a better deal. That is it from me for this video. See you in the next one.